this ikea mydel bed for my kids and there's nothing wrong with it but it's just kind of boring and i tried my best to make the room look kind of cute with the decals and the rug but it just wasn't doing anything for me so i actually had no idea what i was doing because i haven't seen anyone else do a tutorial so i just went for it here are the parts that i modified I've got my multi-tool, so I'm gonna start by cutting this one off. This one has screws, so that one I'll just unscrew. I'm actually gonna leave this here because I think it provides some type of support for the bed. And then same thing down here. So for this entire part, I'm gonna close this off with the beadboard since the ladder is being moved to the end. So I'm gonna leave this brace here, um, but cut this from here we don't need this far we'll leave this open i removed this top part by unscrewing it but then when i took it off these nubbins were left over so i just cut them off with the multi-tool i wanted to make the vertical posts a bit thicker to make them look a lot more substantial so i added two by fours to them um, and i just drilled them in directly with my impact driver and wood screws i used clamps to make sure that the two by fours weren't moving as i drilled them in once that was all done then i could move on to making it beautiful Okay, so I've got my pond MDF, so I'm gonna start cutting these boards. So this is gonna cover up the existing frame because like you don't wanna just use two by four lumber, it's gonna look ugly, right? So this will be like nice so I can paint it. So I'm attaching this primed MDF to the two by fours just with my nail gun and one and three quarter inch nails. And uh, you'll get to see what this is all about because I know right now it's not making a lot of sense. So I know some of you are probably wondering like, what is she doing? Why is she putting these boards up? Okay, here it is. You see? So, you see how much better that looks? And then we're gonna paint it too. Now I'm gonna use beadboard to cover up the panels on the bunk bed. And guys, I am so resourceful. I got this for free from a lumber store where they have like their scrap bin. It just caught my eye and I was like, what? Someone left beadboard here? Let me grab this. So I just cut this down to size and now I can take it up and let's see if it fits. I'm gonna attach my beadboard with my brad nailer and look how cool this looks already. Next, I'm gonna paint this, and I'm using one of my favorite colors of all time. It is Pewter Green by Sherwin Williams. I actually use this in my hallway, so if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it here. It's a beautiful color that works in so many spaces, no matter what the uh, lighting is or the mood. It's just so super rich. And carrying the same color throughout your home is a great way to have continuity, so it looks like your home is really well put together. The kids still need a way to get up to the top of the bed, so now that we've taken the ladder down, we need to relocate it to the foot of the bed. I screwed a 2x4 into the existing framing, and then I started to add these small pieces of beadboard that would cover up this so that it looked seamless and like it was still part of the bed. By the way, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I was actually pregnant and I was starting to show at this point. So my belly just made things a lot harder because uh, I was like five months pregnant and just getting around with the drill and bending down was not easy. And I'm just adding the beadboard with my pin nailer and making sure it goes on securely and it's the perfectly right side. And then because I'm extra, I need to make sure that the other side was also really nicely covered with the beadboard. So I went ahead and added that. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? I also patched the seams of the beadboard with wood filler. And then of course I had to paint it as well. Next, we're gonna build a ladder. So I'm actually using the scrap pieces of wood that we cut off from the bed. These are a bit thicker than the regular pine you would get from the hardware store and I'm just gonna stain them early American. Now I'm gonna place my wood into that crevice and I'm using my nail gun to secure it into the frame. test the stability you know a pregnant lady should be sufficient to make sure it doesn't break for the kids wait pause isn't that beautiful it's already coming together amazing 
This last piece I had to notch out with my jigsaw, but it's so worth it. Of course, we have to make it safe for the kids, so we added a railing on the top bunk bed. I just used 1x2 pine, and I stained it that same early American color, and then we attached it to the bed. So this is how we attach them, these little brackets. Um, in my opinion, these brackets are more secure than trying to drill this into like wood, because this is pine and it's very soft. This is like rock solid, this is never gonna move. Um, and then over here, we just added two screws. Um, and then Abbas is adding the last one there. And then we still need to add like the, bra uh, the, the wood that goes across, but then that's it. And then the bunk bed is done. Oh my God, it's crazy. Here's a progress shot. Isn't it beautiful? Now we have one more thing to tackle. You guys ready? We're gonna start tackling this nook right here, right now. So to tackle that corner, I'm using a small Billy bookcase. I got lucky because the dimensions are so close that it's gonna be a really nice fit snug. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of framing, but this Billy bookcase is so versatile and I love it because I also used it in our basement to build a built-in. All right guys, watch this sweet moment where fingers crossed my measurements line up with the size of this bookcase. Isn't that? No, you're lying. That? You're lying. It's actually like, it's actually like, come on. Okay, don't say There's that. plenty of space. Can you move out of the way so I can see no, it? No, no, that's okay. Let's see. Oh yeah, see and then I, and now, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it out. So I'm gonna add some trim on the side so it's gonna look like a custom built-in bookcase okay so now i'm gonna start building the base that the cabinet is gonna sit on so i want it to sit off the floor a bit so i've already got my pieces cut typically you would see someone doing pocket holes to like attach all these joints together guys i suck with a craig jig for some reason i don't know why so you can use mending plates these are like 50 cents and for me they save like a lot of headache and so i'll show you how to use these so basically this is how these work um you can get bigger ones they have lots of different sizes this is just what i had available so you just put them here and they join like the two pieces together you can also get ones that are like in an l shape and you just screw them and they actually join these together Okay, so I've got this sitting here on my platform. So in order for me to attach this to this, right, I need something behind this, right? Because if I try and just nail it in, like there's nothing to attach it to, right? So I took just these scrap pieces of two by fours, and then we just, I'm gonna attach them like that. I'm just wedging these spacers in and now I'm gonna screw them in from the inside of the cabinet so they're actually attached to the cabinet and not the wall. So I just wanna show how I put these on. I just screwed it from the inside. I'm gonna add another screw, but just one screw on the inside and then this is gonna go on top and then we will nail this in and then paint it so it looks perfect. We'll come back to that storage cabinet after, but I'm just switching gears to make the floating shelves. And there's nothing special about this. This is a standard way to make floating shelves where you attach a one by two pine to the wall. And then you need to make the face plates. So I used my table saw to cut down the plates to the size of that actual nook because I want them to fit really snug and perfect. And then I cut them down to the length after I had the width cut from the table saw. Okay, so let's get to installing our floating shelves. So these are cut and stained and everything. So now all I'm gonna do is slide them in. You wanna get a really good measurement before you cut them. So let's see how I did. What do you think? Okay, so we'll still need to add a face plate, but the first thing I'm gonna do is nail this on and then we'll add the face plate after. Having a clamp is especially handy for this project because you're gonna be nailing in upside down. So it's just a little bit easier because then you don't need to hold that piece of wood. Um, I have a really hard time holding the nail gun upside down as you can see here. Okay, so we are gonna pa um, paint this Ikea cabinet. Painting Ikea furniture is not hard at all. You just need a few key things. You need a sander, 
okay? And then I'm gonna use a P80 grit. So when you're sanding, you really wanna think about getting that shininess off so your next paint actually adheres to the cabinet. This is my favorite little sander. It's super affordable and I really like that it's actually not on a battery because I find that I'm usually sanding for a very long time and I would have to go through many batteries. So this is corded and it's perfect for furniture flips and painting furniture. Okay, so when you're painting furniture, you want to use bin primer. I've used this on basically every single piece of furniture that I've painted. Um, and you want to use a foam roller. You can get these from the dollar store, super, super cheap. And this makes sure you have like a very smooth texture when you're painting your furniture because you don't want to have like any like texture like you would on your walls. Now we're ready to paint. I'm painting it the same color as the bunk bed, so it's Sharon Williams Pewter Green. So I just want everything to flow really well together. Next, I'm attaching this contact paper to this scrap wood I have. I want to make kind of like a countertop for this nook, and I think this is a perfect inexpensive solution for a kid's room. Okay guys, isn't this so cool? Like, run to your dollar store for $1.25. I made this, looks like a really cool counter, and um, I had this scrap wood sitting in my garage for like two years, so win-win, $1.25. So I gotta um, put this on. So the way to actually screw on any type of handle is such, okay? You take a piece of painter's tape and, and there's like so many different applications for this, like hanging mirrors and hanging frames. But anyway, so you take a piece of tape and you put it on the back, okay? Take my screw yeah. and just pierce the holes, okay? This is like where the actual screw is gonna go through, right? Now you take this and you're gonna transfer it. Drill a hole and attach the handle. That's it, I'm ready to show you this reveal. Guys, this IKEA bunk bed project is so beautiful and it makes you wonder how this could ever be IKEA. And if you do, make sure you subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, feel free to ask me any questions, and I'll see you next time for our next DIY.